lot of you have been asking about my stop motion time lapses behind the scenes videos that I've been doing quite a lot recently and it's something that I've wanted to show you for a while so um, let's dive into it right now So we've all seen the big movies like your Coralines, your Paranormans, your Box Trolls and we've seen these time lapses that look like you're watching the normal film but the animator is superimposed within the, the video so it looks like they're manipulating the puppet as it's happening right before your very eyes and it's something that I've started to do myself within some of my recent videos uh, Tommy Tomato being one of them and it's actually quite simple and easy to do and I'm going to show you today how you can do it in your very own stop motion animations that you're making now it's quite simple obviously you have to have a second camera you have your first camera that you're going to use to animate through Dragon Frame or whatever stop motion program you're using then you need a second one now this second camera needs to be a time-lapse camera or a camera that can do time-lapse for instance it needs to have intervals so a one second interval two second interval five second interval to ten second intervals generally speaking I use a five second interval for my time lapses now it doesn't have to be a GoPro it doesn't have to be another DSLR camera it can be as simple as this very camera that I have here 70 pounds I think from Amazon nothing special but it has five second interval time lapse all the way up to 30 seconds I think I like to work in five second intervals so that's how I did Tommy Tomato what I do is I set up my shot ready to animate then I bring the time lapse camera in and I set it just slightly to one side of the main camera maybe more of an open wide shot now these tend to be more open wide anyway because they have fisheye lenses on them we don't want to move it too far away from that because you want to reference up from your original footage to the time lapse footage so don't go doing side shots straight off because it'll be a nightmare for you keep it quite relative to where you put your camera i put mine just to one side of the main camera simple as that the only other thing that you need to remember is to hit that record bang that record button before you start animating and then just leave it just leave it and let it time lapse away and it will constantly time lapse for you as long as you've got enough memory on the card while you're animating if you stop animating stop it but remember to press it again when you carry on once you've finished doing your animation you that are then going to bring it into your editing program now it can be any editing program that you have i use premiere pro that's what we're going to go into right now so i can show you the nitty gritty part of making this whole process work let's go here we are in premiere pro and as you can see i have my two videos imported into the bin the time lapse video and the actual tomato tomato video itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag in the time lapse first onto the sequence now we can see we have a fisheye lens on the video i'm going to try and get rid of that by going into effects up here and just typing in lens what we get is a load of lens presets that we can use we're going to go down to gopro 1080 wide now it's not a gopro camera but it's very similar to a gopro uh, i can guarantee you when i go bang oof, flattened it out straightened it completely that's all you need to do if you're not using a gopro but you've got some other gopro style action camera that's got a fish lens do that bang gone all I'm going to do now is I'm going to scale it up because it's a bit too uh, far away from my liking. We want to kind of set it up a bit closer. So um, there we go. That now is our time lapse footage. That's what it's going to look like when we render out later on. This is a view we're looking at. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to bring in the original animation itself. We are going to scale this down slightly and move it to one side out of the way so it is a reference for us. How's that? Maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit too small. There we go. All I'm going to do is I'm going to move across and I'm going to find the point that I want to use within my Instagram video, which is actually when Tommy Tomato drops, um, realizes that he's in midair and he's going to drop. So I'm just going to move it until we get to that point. Just wave in and right. Okay, so I'm going to go from. See there? I'm going to go from when he changes this one here. Okay, I'm going to click C and I'm going to do a cut and then I'm going to go and I'm going to press Shift Delete and that moves it back to the beginning of the timeline. Now what I need to do is I need to find that same point on my time lapse footage. So I'm going to move myself along quite a bit because obviously the time lapse footage is longer. There we go. Same thing, press C, cut it, shift, delete, we're back at the beginning. We have the exact same shots as you can see here. We have Tommy Tomato, his hand is up, he's just about to fall. The next shots that we show is him falling. Now I'm working in twos. Now this is very important. If we are working on twos, then every time that we take a shot on Dragon Frame, it is taking two photographs of the same image. On every other picture before it moves, I'm going to add a shot of myself working on the puppet. Let me explain. Here we have a normal shot where you can't see me at all, which is fine, that's what we want. But the second shot needs to be me manipulating the puppet before we move on to the next one. So this shot, absolutely fine. I'm going to go right up as close as I can on the timeline. So first one, fine. So we're going to come across and I'm going to just cut those so we know they're fine. Then we're going to go to the next shot. Now, I'm going to go on my time lapse footage. I'm going to scrub through until I find a good point where I look like I'm doing something good animating wise. Does that make sense? I'll show you. Gotcha. You see? Now that looks good because I'm animating in the shot. Yeah? We're going to use that as our second shot before we move to the next move, right? We're going to click C and we're going to move across and we're going to do C again, right? Now then, all of that is going to get deleted. Shift, delete, bang. We go back to the very beginning and we see what we've just done. We have our normal shot. The second shot, me manipulating. The shot after that will be the drop. So what I need to do now is find that drop image where I'm not in shot. Now what you can do is, this is where your reference comes into play. So you want to be able to look at your reference and see exactly that image. And that is the image that you need to try and find on your time lapse. And I believe it's that one right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing again. Press C and I'm going to cut both sides of that. I'm going to delete all of this here by Shift D. There we go. Back to the beginning. Normal shot. Hand in the way shot. Next shot. Tommy Tomato dropping. Next shot is another manipulation shot before we get to this shot of him dropping further and we just go through it and it is very very painstaking and it takes a long time i'll just do a few more so you can see exactly what it is that i'm doing 
I'm scrubbing through and finding another good point where I'm manipulating the puppet. And as you can see, it looks like I'm actually changing to a different puppet itself. Yeah? Now, there's no reason why I couldn't use that shot there. I'm still moving around a bit. So we could go for... That shot. It isn't perfect, but when it's shown really quick, it will give you the illusion of me still manipulating the puppet. So I'm going to do a C, C on either side of that. I'm going to go Shift, Delete. Yeah, it is the same shot. Okay. So what we can do now, luckily, when I move my hands out of the way, we've almost got that next shot in, in view. There we go. So we'll keep that one because it's fine. It's the next one in the sequence. Are you understanding what I'm doing? I'll do one more. I'm going to carry on scrubbing through. So the next shot is just landed on the ground. So I'm going to find the manipulation shot of me just landing him on the ground. How perfect does that one look? My hands are in shot. It really looks like I'm manipulating the puppet. That is a perfect shot to use. We're going to come in and we're going to cut on either side again. We're going to delete all of the back time lapse that we don't need. And look at that. Next shot we need. My hands out of the way. Him actually sat there. Boom. It's that one right there. We're going to cut in on either side again. And then we are going to shift delete it. Let's go to the beginning and let's see what we've just done. First shot, manipulated, dropped, manipulated, dropped, manipulated, dropped. This is how we do time lapse footage to give you the behind the scenes look. Now, it'll be really hard for you to see because I haven't done that much, but if I press play on that, you'll see it straight away. And that is how, that is how we make stop motion time lapse behind the scenes. I really hope that makes sense to you. And I really hope you can use this and start to integrate it into your stop motion videos that you're going to make. It really adds another level and it's a good little extra video for you to use when you post into your Instagram or whatever it is that you're posting to, you have the ability to give another video um, after you've made an animation. So uh, you do your main animation, then you do your behind the scenes time lapse animation. Sometimes your behind the scenes time lapse animation gets more views than the original vi film. That's fine. You're getting noticed and you will get noticed doing videos like this. Now, something that I do want to mention, which is I'm really excited about and I cannot wait. If you are using Dragon Frame, Dragon Frame are working on, uh, on Dragon Frame 5 at the moment and the, the dev version is available in beta, I think. Now, I believe that there is going to be a brand new function on there called Making of Time Lapse. And I believe that you'll set up another DSLR video camera or another camera to dragon frame and it notices motion detection and will take the shot for you so in effect you should be able to make your own time lapse videos all within dragon frame i don't know how good it's going to be but it's quite exciting to 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 see dragon frame pushing this makings of kind of uh, time lapse videos that's out at the moment which is really cool um, We'll wait to see whether it works and as soon as it comes out, I will get that and hopefully be able to show you that feature. But for now, why don't you start doing it? And if you do do it, let me know about it. Tag me in it. Go onto my Instagram, my animated life, Peter Ellis, and let me know about it. 
show me on here, show me on every platform that I'm available on. All the links are below. And uh, just get out there and, and try it. It's a really cool thing to do. Um, I hope you like this uh, tutorial. I do intend to do more of these kind of tutorials for you. Um, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, smash the notification icon so that you don't miss any of these videos. Um, and I will see you in the next video. All that's left to be said, keep animating one frame at a time. Peace.